amazing Yule and are in that, that kind of lovely fuzzy post-Christmas coma, <laughs> comatose kind of state. If you are then thank you very much for joining me because uh, I know sometimes it's it's a bit difficult to concentrate at this time of year because you just want to sleep and eat and enjoy yourself so thank you for joining me and um, I'm just going to talk about some ways that you can prepare for the year ahead. Obviously um, this year's a big one because it's a whole new decade. Welcome to the 20s. <laughs> These are my top five ways that you can prepare your witchy selves for a, an amazing magical new year. My number one way is that you can do a divination spread for the year ahead. Whether you use tarot cards, runes, Ogham staves, oracle cards, playing cards, Lenormand, anything that you choose kind of tiles or cards will work with this. Basically you lay 12 cards, I'll, I'll, I'll just say cards but yeah it can be anything, um, so you lay 12 out in a circle and then a 13th in the middle and reading clockwise from the top uh, is, is each month and the central one is your overall theme for the year. This is just a really great way to get a handle on the year ahead, to know where you should be focusing, to know uh, what to expect, and also just to practice your divination. The second way that you can prepare for, for the year ahead is to start with a fresh slate. So uh, cleanse and protect your home. Really focus on your hearth work. However you want to do that, however speaks to you. Um, obviously you can focus on thresholds and windowsills, you can focus on the four corners, you can use a number of different methods whether that's um, like, a, uh, like a spray with lemon or pine, whether that's elemental magic so using um, incense smoke, salt water to represent earth and water and um, a candle or fire to represent fire, whether it's using warding sigils, um, you could make a witch's ball or a good luck charm to hang, you could bury iron nails or things like that under your windowsills or your doorstep, you could create a witch's jar which is um, filled with spiky objects so again it could be iron nails, it could be uh, cat's claws, it could be rose thorns, however you want to do it. Um, creating a witch's jar can be a really good way of protecting your home as well. However you do it, just make sure your home is nice and cleansed and protected so you're going into the new year with a, a fresh slate, fresh energy and uh, nice and kind of warded up so none of the negative energies can get to you, particularly in January because it can be a bit of a a time full of like winter blues and things like that so uh, it's it's a really good time of year to make sure that you are all um, you, you carry on that like nice fuzzy Christmas feeling into the new year. My third way is uh, a little bit connected to my my last video but uh, try and research and if possible attend a new year or a twelfth night celebration. There are as I said in my last video there are literally hundreds of different types of these across the UK, across the world. There must be one local to you, whether it's a kind of more widespread thing like a wassailing, mama's play, whether it's a bit more localised, whatever it is, research it and attend it uh, because it will be amazing. It will be an experience unlike anything you'll ever have and it will help bring some of that lovely fuzzy Yuletide warmth into into January, uh, which can sometimes be a bit anticlimactic, uh, especially the way we celebrate Christmas now. I mean, Christmas used to last all throughout January <laughs> and um, uh, right up till in bulk, and and now we, we just tend to kind of do Christmas on Christmas Day, and that's it. <laughs> try and try and bring the celebrations through to January. My fourth way is to reflect on the past year. Uh, 
do a bit of that shadow work. It's a really great time of year for shadow work because it is dark. It, it's quite an introspective time of year because we can't really do much. We can't go out. Look inwardly reflect on the last year, celebrate your successes, recognise them, say, yeah, damn, I did good. <laughs> and also uh, flag up some of the points uh, where maybe you didn't do so good and think about what you could have done to improve those. Look inwardly and see what may have caused you to react in the way you did. Figure some stuff out about yourself. Do do that internal shadow work. Do Do the reflection, do the do the hard stuff. Uh, take a good, hard look at yourself. The fifth part, uh, which is somewhat connected, once you have done all of that internal looking and reflection, or looking at the past year, you're then in a really good place to, to look ahead and to set your intentions for the coming year. They could be intentions for your craft, so it, it could be about you know, I want to find a coven, or I want to start researching this topic, or I want to celebrate every Sabbath or every full moon. Um, you know, there's there's a number of different things that it could be, or it it, it could be for you, for your personal life. It could be for yourself. It could be that you want to focus on your career or your love life or your health or any number of things. When you set your intentions, try and make sure that they are quite specific. So don't just say, I want to focus on my health. Say, I want to lose X amount of weight, or you know, I want to go to the gym for 10 minutes every day, or I want to run a marathon, or wh whatever it is. Because I've made that mistake in the past where you just sort of say, oh, I want to be more this or be more that and that doesn't really give you a specific goal so definitely make sure it's it's quite specific when you achieve it you know that you've achieved it definitely do that and once you've once you've set those it makes it so much easier to manifest them because you know what you're aiming for and it, it just kind of lights that fire under your ass to go out and grab them you might want to do this with something like a, a journaling exercise, a vision board, something like that. That that could make it really easy to, to focus on where you want to be at the end of the year, you know, this time next year. And if you do do a vision board, put it somewhere that you'll see it, because that will be a constant reminder to you in your day-to-day -day life of, right, this is what I want to achieve by the end of this year. So it's it's kind of taking all of that shadow work and putting it into action for the year ahead. It's definitely a really, really good time to do that sort of work because calendar years give a really good definable bracket. It's really easy to say, well, this time last year I was X, Y, Z and this time next year I want to be ABC. I hope these five ways have been really really helpful and um, please let me know if you if you do any of those um, I'd really love to hear what your goals are for the year ahead and what you want to manifest and I hope you have an amazing new year however you celebrate it see you in 2020